Well, hello again. Hey, welcome to another live stream here on Chardor Professionals Group. As you probably know, we do this every Wednesday evening at 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And uh, if you'd like to join us here uh, in the Zoom room, you can just click on the link there in the description and uh, come on in. We'd love to have you in here. So, uh, hey, yeah, you know, this week I saw this meme somewhere. It said something like, um, American products don't get stuck on cargo ships. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, wow, that's cool. That's, that's a good point, you know. And I think most of us here are, uh, are using glass that's manufactured in the United States, you know, for the most part. Um, but still, there's just that fact that most hardware is being manufactured overseas, and there's just really no way around that. So as a result, um, a portion of our materials are probably bobbing around out there in the Bay, um, you know, at least here in California. So Here's my question to you guys for this week. What are you doing to cope with uh, the shortages? I mean, how are you managing that? And uh, we could start with Bill Dobman, because I know he's got a unique perspective on this. Wow. You know, we started running into it probably eight months ago. So we just started stocking up. Fortunately, I've got a building big enough to do it. But I've got about a year's supply of hardware in advance, and we just keep it as inventory. Uh, our glass we're buying domestically. The problem was they didn't have truck drivers to get it from the plant to us as regularly as we needed it. Now, they didn't shut us off. They have plenty of glass. It was just transporting it from the float plant to us. But we've kind of worked through that lately. We're getting a truck a day, and you know they've been right on time and very good. So... Uh, I do get metal extrusions made domestically. They're 47 week lead time. Wow. So you, if you're going to place an order, you've got to do a projection for about a year and a half to bring it in. It's amazing. They shut down during COVID, let a lot of people go. And when they came back, there was a ton of orders there for them and they didn't have a quarter of the staff that they once had and they had to go through training, safety training, everything. So they're way behind and I understand all metal extruders are that way. But that's the best we can do is just stock up on our supply and then do whatever special coating we can in-house or find a local powder coater uh, for those specialty colors. So you're going ahead and having your aluminum extruded yourself. Yes. yes. So that's probably just for the purpose of you know, the kind of money you can probably save doing that. It's that the shape of the profile is different than most. Um, so that's another reason we can control the finish and the quality of it better. And because I'm having it made, I don't have to get a full container like I used to. I, I did bring in from China about 15 years ago and it was very good material. Um, then we moved to Mexico and we found a Mexican extruder uh, because the tariffs went up to 127% uh, when you were importing Chinese. And this goes way back to 2008. Uh, so the tariffs went through the roof. So we went to Mexico with the North American Free Trade Agreement. There were no tariffs. They just turned to be an unreliable source. And I found a source in the United States. Uh, and they were very good. And now I could get one truckload instead of a whole container load. It used to be a 12-week turnaround time for a new order. Now it's 47 weeks. So it's crazy. So how many different finishes do you offer? We've got a chrome brush nickel, polished brass, oil rub bronze. We're doing the matte black uh, in-house with the Cerakote. Um, that's it. That's it. That's it for ours. And if I get us, if we sell a polished nickel or a... Uh, Vibrant brass bronze, I'll just order one or two sticks from C.R. Lawrence. So we don't yeah. sell that much of it. Yeah. Or we go to clamps instead of channel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you guys use a lot of channel. I mean, that's kind of your go-to. Yeah, we do. We do a lot of removals and reinstalls. <laughs> so we like covering up the track of the old door. So, yeah, we do a lot of that. That's why a lot of the pictures I post, you'll see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now, I see that. 
And then when people come in their showroom, they see it, they like it. Uh, we offer everything. We offer the clamps, the channel, uh, smaller clamps, which is smaller than the standard two by two. And we give them a choice for what they want. A lot of people are going with the channel because it's just a very sleek look and it's very forgiving. We can do tighter tolerances in the glass. And uh, if their tile is not perfect, it's, again, it's very forgiving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's funny because, you know, a lot of people kind of poo-poo, you know, the, the channel thing. And they're, they'll say, oh, that's not really frameless. In fact, uh, I wrote a, a blog about this, probably more than one, I'm sure, yeah. over the years, uh, about like, you know, is, a, is a, an enclosure that uses channel still frameless? You know, and of course the answer is yes. You know, frameless is just um, synonymous with heavy glass, right? That's what you really mean as a heavy glass enclosure. And, and uh, really channel um, is, uh, is kind of underrated. Um, a lot of people prefer it. And in a lot of ways, it's, it's a lot more seamless looking than, you know, some kind of bulky clamps. They're like right, you know, here and there. And, and especially if you've got like, you know, a 90 degree return and, and they're different size panels and you don't want to space all of your clamps at like six inches because it doesn't look right on a little tiny panel. So on the little panel, there's space at three inches. On the big panel, there's space at six or Whatever. I mean, a lot of times channel is a more clean, uniform look, I think. So you, you get all of your aluminum uh, extrusions um, extruded yourself. I know you, you have your own header material. So just yeah, we got, that. We've got 13 dies, 13 different dies. And I don't know if you've ever gone through it, but you pay a fee to get the dies drawn out then you pay a fee to get the, the actual tooling made. They can only use it, they say, for your uh, extrusion. Uh, we've flown out and taken a look at the process. It's an amazing process when you see them load the billets of aluminum into this. I don't know what the pressure is that they put on those presses Huge. and push it through. Gotta uh, be. It's, it's amazing, it's amazing. It's that a great process. I went over when Vista Wall used to be, they had a plant over in Fresno, uh, Modesto. Yeah. And they pushed their own. I went over there and looked at it. And they had pushed a, you know, four and a half, inch and three quarter by four and a half storefront. And that thing would come out like a spaghetti. Yeah. And they grab it and snap it and that's it. Yeah. Amazing. And it was amazing. So, I mean, there's, there's problems now in the supply chain, just getting the billets. I don't know if you guys, when you do your removals, if you strip aluminum and sell it back to the junkyard, but we do that often and we're getting more than double of what we used to get for it. So wow. just, just aluminum has gone through the roof. What's clean aluminum? Prices aluminum? haven't seemed to increase up here because we do the same thing. We, we save all the aluminum uh, for years. And, you know, I'd get the money and just give it back to the employees evenly distributed, but but over the year, over the last several years, it's not even worth the price of gas to take it over to the recycle place. Really? Because the clean has been going yeah. for a dollar a pound. Oh, I mean, that's significant. Wow. The, the dirty is 67. So if you, if you don't take the magnets out or the screws or the brackets, you're getting 67 cents a pound. If you've got some nice clean stuff, and clean doesn't mean that it doesn't have caulking on it. It just means that it doesn't have the screws and the cast metal. Other um, metals, right? Other metals. Yeah. Yeah. Other metals, the magnets uh, in the strike, the gaskets. Obviously, they don't want the gaskets in there. But for that, they're paying a dollar a pound. Yeah, wow. So, I mean, my recycler, they give us these two big bins. And when we fill them up, they bring their truck and they take the bins away and give us two new ones. Hmm. So. We use it for charity. You know, you give it to your employees. We do it to make a wish. Uh, so by the end of the year, we're, we're granting two or three wishes for kids and the whole company feels good about it. That's awesome. Yeah, here in my area, we have this organization called Gray Bears and uh, they uh, help out, you know, the elderly primarily. So they, they help fund Meals on Wheels, stuff like that. Perfect. And, they're close by, so um, I just, that's where all my recycling goes, is to take it over there and give it to those guys, you know, I, which I don't, I don't produce a ton of it, 
you know, I, I found like for me to take the time to try to recycle, it's just really not worth it. But if I, you know, if I can be donated to somebody, they can make a be- lot better use of it, you know, sure. than I can. So, so sure. that's awesome. So, uh, Steve Nunn, what, do you, what are you doing for hardware? How, how are things working out for you? Well, I guess I'm in the same boat as most of the other people who don't have a lot of stock. I'm kind of at the mercy of the, of the suppliers. Um, the companies I use, they'll, I'll get a box sometimes. It'll have CRL stuff. It'll have Cardinal stuff. It'll have random stuff in it. And then sometimes it'll just have a sweep in it. And then I'll get a couple clamps and FedEx and then a handle and by UPS. And it's just very sporadic. But uh, there are a few local shops here in San Antonio that they make their own stuff. They're, they've got their own branded. So if I run into a pinch on, usually it's just very simple items, you know, clamps and, and standard hinges, but anything specialty, you know, glass to glass hinges or any any stuff like that is, is going to be a little difficult. I know I've got a lot coming up that's got glass to glass, uh, like senior prima hinges and some mm. wine room stuff. So that's going to be difficult, especially because it's in black and black and brush bronze. I've got brush bronze, uh, satin brass coming up, and all those colors are, are kind of a challenge right now. But just kind of at the mercy of what what I can get at the time. And it's glass is no problem. I can get glass in two or three days, but yeah, <laughs> you get your glass in one plant. Yeah, I noticed there for a while, it was a little bit tricky getting like rain glass. You know, it was taking a little while to get that. Um, and then there was, uh, there was a, a minute there when Starfire got a little scarce here. But then there was other low iron glass and I really don't. I don't really care what low iron I get as long as it's, you know, the same, you know, they match each other, you know, but, um, but yeah, but yeah, it's funny, you know, when your supplier starts to say, yeah, you know, we're kind of running short on this or it's going to be next month before we start getting certain, you know, parts in. Right. So it starts to make you think, you know, Hey, do I, do I have enough of everything that I need right now? And, is there a way to, you know, kind of stock up on stuff? Yep. And I guess it's probably going to get a little bit worse before it gets better. So, yeah. hey Mark, remind think- me where, where you're at. What's that? Mark. Mark or Mike? Mike. Mike. Oh, it's, it's Mike, right? Mike. Sorry. Yeah. I should kind of, I should probably rename you so I don't forget what your name is. <laughs> um, I'm up in uh, West Virginia. Chris, uh, about an hour and a half south of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And, you know, this whole supply thing has really hit hard this year. Um, I was, I've, I've shared some of this with Billy and, and Bill uh, in private conversations. I have had, uh, you know, just like you guys, uh, from the heavy glass side, supplies running out. It seemed like we have ever had a rush of brush bronze, uh, requests for brush bronze and, and matte black, and that's hard to get. Um, but more than that, what what's really hurt me, I relied too much on one supplier, which was Southeastern Aluminum out of Indianapolis, and they've really imploded. And the quality of product that I've tried to, that I've gotten from Basco, Cardinal, um, has been nothing short of terrible. Scratched uh, aluminum, dented product that comes in. Um, so what I've done recently is I've, uh, used a United Plate Glass out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to, to buy all my glass. They, they send every light a glass with a sticker on it that says it's been quality uh, checked. Um, but hardware, I'm really having a heck of a time. And it's impacted uh, uh, on the heavy glass side, you know, people just get frustrated with you when you tell them the lead time. But we do this production home side of things where they get in these real basic builder grade doors and it's impacted house closings. And these, these home builders are coming down hard on me uh, uh, because I can't get a shower door in in a timely manner. Uh, and some of these doors have been ordered since the beginning of August and I can't get them in. And we're talking chrome door and inline panel and th- these guys aren't coming through. So I've been on the search for a shower door company with really uh, very little success. People don't want to deliver on their truck. They'll LTL it to North Central West Virginia, but they don't want to deliver it. Um, I've recently reached out to Coastal. They said they'd send it 
a truck up if my volume was enough, but I'm in a real pickle and it's really been challenging. So. No, on a bright on a bright side, Mike. Anybody in West Virginia that's in your boat is in the same pickle, so it's not like that builder is going to go to somebody else. It's just not available in your area. True. Well, you're, that is, that statement is true. Uh, although in the Pittsburgh market, where one of the builders is based out of, uh, some of my competitors up there, and that's about an hour and a half north. So we're not real competitors, you know, on a daily basis, but they're able to buy doors from like Splendor uh, shower uh, doors. Um, and because it's a bigger city, uh, they're being served. And so the builder comes to me and says, how come the guys in Pittsburgh can get doors, but you can't? Sure. And, uh, you know, it's just been a real, real struggle in that regard. But yeah, you're right, from the heavy glass side, it, we're okay. But th these frame and semi-frame doors are making me insane. I lost all my hair. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't lose mine yet. <laughs> so that's what happened, huh? <laughs> yeah, you know, I've, I've just recently gotten away from those um, semi-frameless enclosures. You know, I've, what I say yes to has become narrower and narrower. And that's just, that's one of the advantages I have just, you know, being me, you know, and doing the kind of, uh, of business that I do. I, not everybody can do that. You know, I still do the, what I call manufactured sliders, you know, bypass doors. Cause it's like you have almost have to be able to, you know, provide something like that to people. And, and those are so quick and easy to do. I can actually make money on those um, too, but yeah, man, the, uh, the whole like semi frameless pre manufactured type kits, man are so, so hit and miss, you know, if you find a really good distributor for those, that's a wonderful thing. Well, like during times like this, even even that's you know hit and mess. You don't use WBS. I do, you know, and, and um, actually WBS, it's a company called Wardrobe and Bass Specialties out here in Modesto, California, was one of the very first um, suppliers that that set me up with an account. In fact, I think they were the first one. Maybe CRL. them, you know, and, and maybe CRL. Those, those guys and uh they've been with me all all the time and they've been a great company to work with they've always taken care of me they've had good quality oh, yeah really consistently so yeah shout out to those guys probably sharon called on you i believe yeah i'm sure probably yeah have you ever seen their building over there i never have but it's got to be something it's an else. old beer warehouse and it's got more glass stacked in there than you've ever seen in your whole life. I mean, heavy shower doors, everything. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Now talk about, you know, I mean, getting container ships, you know, that's those. Oh, yeah, guys, that's. You know. yeah. <laughs> but, you know, someone's got to do it if you can make a run for it. But now, you know, I, I sometimes think, sit around thinking these days, wow, maybe I should have took one of those guys up, one of those. You know, companies from Asia that contacted me two years ago saying, you want to buy much hardware for very cheap? So, yeah, yeah. And what's good about those guys is they, they deliver twice a week or every other day. And you have a lockbox in your door and they put it inside at night. You know. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, they, they deliver in the middle of the night. It's yeah. Weird, so. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty convenient. So let's see who else. So what about you, Tim? I mean, what's going on with your your supplies and stuff? Are, um, do you have everything you need or what? Glass. Lately, I've been selling a lot of Starfire, Ultra Clear Shower Guard, but every job, and I get that in three or four days, unless they don't you know screw it up. And uh, I order from Sierra Lawrence, and I look at their website and it says you know we have 107 available. You order it, and all of a sudden you get the, the confirmation. Well, it's not going to be available until the first of uh, next year. And I call him and I said, what's going on? He goes, well, you got to click other locations. Well, they changed that screen. You have to do will call. And once you see will call, you can see where all, where all their hardware is at in the United States. 
So then you got to go back and tell them, okay, I want it shipped from San Diego. You know, and so I get the stuff. You got to play with their, their the, alg the algorithms or whatever, right? And then they put out a new website. Yeah, I, I haven't seen that yet. How many oh, of you guys have looked at that? Yeah, I, I went into it. And first thing you have to do is you have to reset your password on the new website. So now they want, you know, one uppercase letter. Has to be so long. Has to have numbers and a, um, a symbol. So I did that and I went into it. And I started looking around. I go, you know, it, it's sort of like uh, FAC website. The thing comes up in stock. But if it's not in stock, then you have to figure out. Usually you can look before and it'll tell you when it comes in. So you got to look around for that. So, but if you do that, you can still go back to your old website and click go in with your, your password so it doesn't screw up your the old website. So they got a lot of work to do on this. If you get special pricing, does that carry over to the new website too? Is your pricing yeah. follow? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's funny. So I used to get all my pricing from Cheryl Lawrence on an Excel spreadsheet. Oh, it, really? They had sent it to me. So back in, so I was, it came up on one of my looking at something. So back in 2010, their uh, adjustable header was $42. Now it's over $100. And, you know, a hinge was, or a, a pole was like $22. Now they're $36. So it's just interesting to see the, the jump in prices, you know. How many, how many of you have doubled your price, your retail price between 2010 and 2021? Yeah. Not quite doubled. <laughs> no, not quite doubled. But do you think the grocery stores do that to us for retail? Yeah, yeah. but it's just interesting. Then I went back to '06, and because that's the first one I got was in '06, and so like a, a pole was like twenty one bucks. Now they're thirty five bucks. You know, so <laughs> it's just interesting. Look at the and like a clip was. Uh, I used a BGCU one clip. It was eight ninety back in 06, now it's seven seventy two. So that went down. So well, I'm surely not advocating price gouging or anything. I'm just saying as an industry, we sometimes yeah. have a harder time. We have an easier time paying the bills, have a harder time increasing our price to where it needs to okay. continue to get our margins at the same dollar. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's something I ask people all the time when they say, oh, you know, I ask them, you know, how's it going? They're like, oh, we're so busy, you know, can't can't even keep up. I always ask them, are you charging enough? And a lot of times they're just like, they can't believe I'm asking them that. It's like, so right. they hadn't even thought of, you know? It's like, hey, if you're getting every job that you're bidding, chances are you're not, you're not charging enough. And I'm fortunate to have data from shower shops all over the country. And so when I have a new client come in, I just simply say, and I'll never tell exactly, I would never say like bill charges, but I can say the average single door, that was right around $1,400. So like, well, you couldn't get that in my market. And we're in Montana. I'm like, what's, what's the difference between my market and Naples? Nothing. They travel here in the wintertime. They travel to Naples in the summer. They're a better deal with me. And they're certainly not going to say otherwise. <laughs> so it's important to ask those questions. And that's why as an industry, we have to, talk about what are margins that you should cover. And I'm not going to say much more tonight unless someone asks me, but I will say everybody, there's a podcast I just released today, Today in Trades, with Tom Reber, the contractor fight. It is written for us, not just contractors, the fight between our eyes and our ears, the fight inside. And he just, that book is great. It's written well. I didn't just bring him on because he's a guest. I really believe in what he is trying to bring to the table. So if you want to good listen in your van driving around measuring whatever um, just tune in i think you'll really take away some great nuggets from him great guy and get the book if you want it's you only have to pay shipping if you go through the link on my podcast i like your podcast tell us again what the name of it is today in trades jim evans it's on spotify is probably easiest for most people just driving around your truck and uh this recent one the tom reber one like i said i I was like, yeah, it's contractors. They're not as good as shower or glass people. I was blown away what he wrote about. It's every sub, every GC. And it really is helping our industry. He's really an advocate for industry. He's an HGTV host. Just a fantastic bang up guy. Jim, why don't you type it into the chat there so we'll all have it. Certainly. That Certainly. is a great idea. That's Jim Evans. He's uh, His podcast is really good, man. He's such an upbeat guy and such a positive um, 
guy. I really like his um, his ethics and uh, which one? This Jim Evans? This Jim Evans right here. Hey, I was I was looking for him. Uh, name. I was trying to find. Yeah, him. I mean, at least you know it's like uh, you don't clearly know. don't hang hey. out with. Me. I can't remember who it was. Was it? I think it might have been W. C. Fields or someone who said like, um, "Sincerity is like the most important thing. Once you can fake that, you've got it made." <laughs> what you don't see is you don't see is before the podcast like don't be afraid don't be scared don't be scared you know it's always a battle but i'm i'm no different than any one of you but i appreciate the words chris so now are you still um in the glass shop that, i mean and in addition to what you do with um business, are you still working in the glass as, as, as you said you can never get out of it i have tried to retire i did one two months ago my closest friends and some of my old clients will insist i do it open checkbooks sometimes. I'm not very good, guys. I'm just really good at under-promising. Um, and so I still do a few. I do probably two a year. But, you know, I'm now into just trying to help shops as much as I can. But I've, I've done enough that I know the pains. I know the struggles. And, and I love these meetings. I love learning from all of you. I feel like I'm... I never got as good as, as some of these markets where, like yours, Northern California. So I learned a lot in these calls. I learned a ton. And people ask me. So I'll always be educated. But, yeah. Um, I was a better estimator than I was an installer. I'll just say that. <laughs> Well, I was just curious if you were still working. And you had a family. Um, your family's yeah. Close. My dad still has three shops. If anyone wants to buy them, uh, pretty large shops in Montana. He's trying to work his way out. My brother works for a consulting firm, so it's down to my cousins or, or my daughters. But no, I, I, I stepped away from the family business, moved to the Big Cliffs full time. Had you know, you got I have I have to do something really well. I can't try to do five or six things. But obviously, you know, we have a lot of clients in Montana, so. They are hard up. They call me, and I'll leave my office and run over and help them. That's awesome. Hey, Steve Nunn. Yep. Come on, Steve. What do you What are you up to, man? How what, What's your What's your supply line like? We discussed mine already. Oh we Oh no, I'm thinking of Billy. Billy is the one who I wanted to go to. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah. Billy Britt. What's going on, man? Um. So, fellas, I'm, I'm, I'm probably living about the same as everybody else. Um, I've talked to Mike some about it. I kind of live in a good spot where we're at. Uh, I've got, you know, supply coming in from multiple directions. You know, we've got – being in Asheville, we've got big cities, you know, kind of bordering around us with Atlanta and Charlotte, uh, Knoxville, uh, Tennessee. Um, you know, so we're, we're getting supply from different directions. But the, the hardware issue, which I think is really the, the key issue in the industry right now, uh, is more about um, CRL is where everybody ends up, um, it seems. And I tried, you know, five or six months ago to look at some other outlets. Um, I have purchased some hardware in various places uh, that I wouldn't normally be purchasing um, for various reasons, not just hardware, not, you know, being low in supply, just because I'm trying to better what we're doing every day. Um, you know, I think Chris, you've done some of the things, you know, the same stuff. Uh, if there's better way to do things, then, then why not test it out if you can? So the big thing we're doing, you know, I'd say the big thing, the simple thing we're doing daily is, you know, your, your standard hardware that everybody uses, you know, your standard clip, your standard hinge, um, all the stuff that doesn't exist simply because everybody's asking for it. I'm looking for the alternate option. Um, so I'm looking for that clip that, you know, normally I would never pull uh, from my system uh, and trying to see, well, is that available? Because like Tim said, if you go to CR Lawrence's website, that's just a, you know, that's kind of a, a fascia. It's not, it's not legitimate to what's actually available to you. It's a crap shoot. No, it's yeah, not. You got to know how to work it. Yeah. Well, work it or not work it, it yeah, disappears yeah. quickly when the entire country needs something and there's a hundred of them available. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm looking at alternate options outside of that. I tried to prepare. I think I was probably about three, two or three months late on trying to get hardware in before my suppliers said, no, 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 we're not going to, you know, we're not going to do bulk orders um, right now. Uh, so I was a little late on that, but I did get some stuff in. We're doing okay, but the big problems is like like Steve said, with your your alternate finishes, uh, your stuff outside the box, your satin brasses, your yeah. your antique stuff. Um, black hasn't been too bad for us. Uh, we we've got in some black stuff prior, uh, and black is just so heavy right now, you know that 
Uh, one of our manufacturers went up like 20% on all of their black hardware, which caused us a little bit of an issue. Um, but people are paying prices right now, you know, so it's, it's, it's not as much like, oh man, they went up 20%. So what do we do? We just got to eat that. It, it, with our volume, what it is and the lack of hands available, we've just got to, we've just got to push that price. Um, like you say all the time, it's, you know, I, to, today, a great example, uh, someone in our office was pricing a single door to go to an area that's, a, you know, a little far outside of our area and they priced it and they're kind of new to the game. And it was, well, I, I, they'll never pay that. Like we need to, we need to tighten it down. I'm like, no, 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 we're super busy with a lack of people. If we don't go do that job and somebody else wants to go do it for that number, let them, let them have it, you know, and within 30 seconds of sending the price digitally, we got a reply. Sounds great. When can we do it? So, uh, so it, it's like Jim said, you've got to, you've got to understand where everything's going and value yourself. But yeah, hardware wise, it's thinking outside the box. Like we do with a lot of things in what we do. How can I get something comparable um, that will not slow me down? But I'm, we're slowed down too. I've got a, I got a whiteboard in my shower department that has 20 showers right now waiting on some item. You know, and we're trying to alleviate that by uh, if, if this company doesn't have an adapter block or a header bracket or something we're missing, I can find that somewhere else or I can find an alternate option. So that's that's what we're doing, you know, and just trying to get around it. But we have people that are just pissed constantly, but that's because we're doing a lot of work. So the alternate thing would be not having enough work and nobody being mad. So that would be no good. So. Man, Billy, yeah, we're, we're seeing more and more users using tags specifically for that. So in our program, you can tag jobs, right, with different items. And so it'd be like waiting on header, waiting on clip, clip missing. And like, it used to never be an issue. And now it's just for some of these shops, it's this common, like an entire workflow is just chasing down like that last piece. It's just absolutely aggravating. And if you guys aren't organized and ahead of it, like my dad said, if customer calls you before you call the customer, you are always in trouble. I don't care. And so it's hard because you're just like, legitimate reason but yeah man so it's crazy yeah and there's nothing worse than getting out to a job and be missing that one little header adapter part or whatever man that sucks because you, you just can't do the job no. but chris we were at the glass show and this I, I think jim you'll know it because the booth was almost straight ahead of yours as you're looking out there there's a company called igt out of florida and they had they brought in a beautiful brush gold sliding door it really was a showpiece stopper. As you turn the corner, you couldn't miss it. So we talked to him, and I think everybody likes it. Billy, I think you went over and looked at it. Uh, I think anybody in the shower door industry went over and looked at it. Uh, so I got our sample in this week, and they give you a kit for a, uh, it's a fixed panel and a sliding door, barn door style. The fixed panel, they don't have the brush gold clips, so they give you a brush nickel. <laughs> they, don't, they don't have the handles in yet. They give you a brush nickel handle. So you've got a beautiful gold bar. You've got the wheels, the stoppers, the wall brackets, all in the, the beautiful brush gold. And they're giving you brush nickel. And now this is the sales kit. So, I mean, they don't even have all their parts for that. Okay. And what the, guy the, customer's like, the customer's like, are you spray painting in there? No, no, no just, uh, just, airing just airing it out. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Uh, a right. your presentation. Yeah. So, I well, we've got a, uh, we'll probably be able to sell 30 of them in the first month. And the guy imports them, right? He brought in 12. <laughs> He's importing 12. I mean, I could buy them all right now and sell them, but he doesn't even have all the parts. Let's he put in those in it. Kit. So <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know what they're thinking. What was a little weird to me is I looked into those about probably early part of this year because I had a customer that wanted one. Um, and it was one of those that wanted it no matter what. And I looked into it and the address I was given because there was actually somebody on Facebook, probably through the Shower, Shower Pros uh, group. And I was like, hey, I'm really interested in this. I want to get it. The address I was given, I looked it up. It was in South Florida. And it located as a uh, storage facility. And I, I've used Google Maps to go all around it looking for anything legitimate, and it was just a storage facility. So it made me a little weary. Their display was in an outhouse. <laughs> they had a great display in Atlanta. I will say that for sure. But yeah, yeah, I was a little skeptical. So we got our first batch in. They don't. The installation instructions are pathetic. Uh, they're actually terrible. 
and they don't give you a footprint. So your salesman doesn't know what uh, width your threshold can be in order for that to work properly. So they're really deficient on a lot of things that you know you need when you go to install it. But the brushed gold is beautiful. I will say that. <laughs> what little that we got. So I'm, I've got a job I'm doing now. Sense of I've got a job I'm doing now where it's all matte black. So Sierra Lawrence doesn't have the header and they don't have the adjustable um, hinge. So I had to order that from FHC and everything else from Sierra Lawrence. Then I had another contractor that he wanted 12 foot, the 12 foot lengths of the half inch matte black channel. Sierra Lawrence didn't have that. So I ordered it from FHC. Yeah, the price was right, but the shipping was out of sight. Because if Sierra Lawrence had it in LA, they would put it on the transfer truck and ship it to Union City and then ship it to me for half the price. Sure. That's the only thing about FHC. They don't have branches out where you can get the material cheaper or the shipping cheaper. But he's paying for it. <laughs> Give them time. They'll get it. They'll get it. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is a time right now where if you had a bunch of anything, you know, you could sell them like crazy because, you know, people are just waiting on stuff. And uh, there's quite an opportunity right now just to be able to, to step in and do something that's kind of unconventional. And, you know, a real uh, benefit for me to be a part of this group is just these are, you know, these are all people who are, you know, innovators who are like thinkers who are, you know, spending time, you know, figuring out, you know, how to solve these problems. And uh, Billy, man, that, that was a great um, little uh, uh, presentation you gave there because you touched on some of those things of like, okay, so I'm out of these parts and, um, or, or, you know, these are, these are obviously becoming a little bit scarce. Okay, where do I go to find those? And in the meantime, you know, what's available? You know, maybe I should just stock up on whatever is available right now. Mm -hmm. um, just knowing that those are probably going to be scarce pretty soon. You know, or, or just like, uh, I look at like what Bill's doing, you know, what Bill's been doing for a long time. I mean, this guy is like way ahead of the curve, I think, you know, in, in terms of, um, you know, the, the, the format that he uses, the formulation that he uses for, for his shower doors. I mean, it's just, it's a great way to approach it. And I've been kind of, um, you know, he's been my mentor. He doesn't know that, but he's been mentoring me secretly, you know. And because, uh, uh, man, you know, it's something that like my, my you know, so-called competition around here, they're not doing that. They're not doing anything like that. They're trying to do whatever is like easiest, cheap, you know, thing, you know, they're, they're out, you know, installing, you know, uh, sliding doors at McDonald's, you know, and, and then going out and do, you know, some shower door, you know, uh, in the afternoon. And it's like, they're just trying to find stuff that they can get their guys, you know, that are, that they're going to be able to do and not screw up too bad. And um, so we've got- They some, never screw up. Yeah, you know, well, not too bad, right? <laughs> Chris, to your point, and, and it's not just me, believe me, everybody on this group is in this boat. The fact that you're taking your Wednesday night to participate in this says a lot about you. It says a lot about your company. Uh, so the guy, the small glass shops who you're competing against have every right to be on this. You're not going to boot them off of this uh, program or, or this page, but yet they're not here. So I'm not an innovator. I'm just very kind of here. He's pretty business. close by. Huh? Yeah. Jim's here. He's pretty close by. There, case in point. Right? I'll swim across the bay and see you. <laughs> Wait, uh, we've had Ellie Bon on. I mean, he's one of my competitors in Orlando. I get along great with the guy. I mean, you got to get along together. But what I'm saying to justify your point is I'm not so much an in innovator. I'm a I'm caring about the industry, caring about our business, of course, but I know that I'm competing against other guys that are like what we're all competing against. 
They order one set of hinges, one handle, and some clamps for one job. And then they wait for the next job and they'll do it. They won't invest a few hundred bucks in inventory. Now, the guys that are, I think Brandon even mentioned it last week, he was loading up on inventory. So if he's got an account on CR Lawrence and he says there's 200 available, he's going to order 200. Yeah. Now, he may not need them, but it's going to hurt the guy that's ordering the onesie twosies. So he's kind of flexing his muscles there without, well, either one, he knows it or he doesn't know it, but he's doing it anyhow. And if he is doing it, God bless him, because it's a smart move. But yeah, money in the bank, know, man. Money in the bank. Is. You, I, I, can't, I, I, don't, I don't even want to say this, but it's true. We, we used to have another glass because Montana had a scarce amount and we had stores all over. And if there were two available, they used to show the quantity and we'd buy them both because one of our stores would use them and we knew we had the job. It was, and um, now they won't tell you the quantity, which would actually kind of be smart for CRL. So they just say they have it or they don't, you know, yeah. but it is, a, you know, that, that's part of strategy. It's chess. We are competitors. As long as you're not being malicious with us, we were always able to sell it. We didn't like return it the next day, but it's crazy. And you have to have a big inventory. You know, I used to rag on chops, but if it's your common stuff, you know, you need to stock it. Clips, you, have, you should stock as much as you can. So I think that was a really good point, Bill. And then the last thing that I think was interesting is design with inventory in mind. So how many customers are like, God, well, I wouldn't have gone with this if I'd have known how long. But maybe you had a U-channel option available quicker. You don't always know that. But I think customers deserve to know when you're sending a bid, especially with options, that you could say, this could be a week faster. This is going to take a little longer. It's completely your choice because my grandpa used to say you have three things, quality, speed, and price. You only get two of those three things. And then he'd stop and he'd take a sip of his coffee and he'd look at me and he'd go, and we never compromise on quality. <laughs> and I'll never forget that. He's like, you really just have speed and price. <laughs> so anyway, take it for what it is. You got oh, to play the game. You got to play the game right now. I mean, you got to be able to, if you can buy it, buy it. I mean, satin brass and brushed bronze is impossible to get, but we buy it. We stock it. We have we have it for our jobs. And then as soon as we need, we'll, we'll order more. We got more on order. When that comes in, we order more. Like we just keep, well, we have time to wait for it. We can wait two months for satin brass because we have it on hand and we have enough on hand to be able to complete our jobs. But we're also supplying, you know, we're shipping it out different locations right now because, you know, it's harder to get for them. But so we're able to hold it on, you know, it's, it's not going away anytime soon. Let's put it that way. I mean, China's having a huge issue with aluminum right now that's going to hit us hard in probably November of next year. So true that, man. Yeah. And like, you know, not to be a downer or anything, but, you know, watching the economy, you know, the U.S. dollar, what it's doing, it's like, I wonder, you know, if my money's going to be worth anything, you know, in six months. But, man, I know, like, uh, my hardware will be. So I'll just buy that. I mean, if I, if I need to buy a ham sandwich with an SU4, man, you know, I'll be able to do that. What's the, what's the money making you if it's sitting in the bank as opposed to that inventory that you're going to sell? Worst case scenario, you sell it to some other guy in this group, but you'll get your money back because you know you can sell it. It's not wasted money. Yeah. Worst case, I'll pay in that black, right? Yeah, exactly. Black hardware. <laughs> exactly. Do you guys have a sense of when this might shake out? Do, does anybody have a sense of when things you know we hear about container ships out out in the, in the ocean because they can't get unloaded but i mean i have customers say to me well when do you think this is going to break I, I really don't have an idea I, I think with the hardware i think the container ships aren't anything i think it's worse than what it really is right now and it's going to get worse i mean you're going to think once people start full speed even more it's just the supply is going to shrink so you know you look at amazon they're they want to lease planes to fly all their stuff over here from China. They don't want to put it on ships anymore. Yeah, yeah that, Amazon's hurting a lot of like you try to buy a van right now. Try to buy a van anywhere in the country right now. The Amazon's buying everything. They're not just buying Fords. They're buying Transits. Nissan just quit making their van, so yeah. um, they're not selling. They weren't selling enough, but like you can't get anything right now. Uh, Enterprise, their fleet is depleted. They're trying to get vehicles. They can't get vehicles to rent. So it's just, especially with the whole semiconductor stuff with all these chips. I know Ford, I just talked to my Ford rep today. They're, they're like sourcing them at a higher rate, obviously. They're paying premiums for it from like Samsung, 
uh, Microsoft, anywhere they can get chips for their higher end cars that they're selling, not necessarily the fleet stuff. They're trying to get those in the cars, but I mean, they got a couple of plants going up. I know we have a million square foot, probably like five miles from my house, a million square foot semiconductor plant. They're just breaking ground. So it'll be, it'll be a long time. <laughs> I think we probably, I think we're probably going to see at least another year or so of a little bit of a struggle with hardware. For sure. So that's why if you can buy it, buy it and you always sell it. I mean, chrome and brushed nickel and oil or bronze has been around for decades. So, I mean, it's not, it just goes through its phases. Yeah. It's those specialty ones that were fad to come in now, like the, the vibrant brush bronze. I'm only getting it now popping up periodically and it's not really worth carrying. Mm -hmm. um, and taking well, that's up not inventory. a popular item. Not anymore. No. But, and you get the fads. I, when I first started, they used to have the uh, polished brass and chrome mixtures together, uh, the combos. You would put a chrome handle and a little brass escutcheons, and then you use either brass or chrome hinges. Well, they're starting to do that now with the black and the gold. So I'm okay. starting to see the brush gold and they're using matte black with it. I haven't it's, seen that yet. <laughs> yeah. I've never done one of those combination hinges with. Oh yeah, we Moen used to make those in their faucets. It was a whole line of the yeah. uh, the Brown, chrome and the polished Brown brass together. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's probably 15, 20 years ago, maybe. Yeah, it, it was really popular for about four or five years. I don't know. I haven't been in this business that long. <laughs> that <laughs> champagne finish lasted about a year. Oh yeah, champagne. Yeah, that was. We, we might not have a choice, but to be like, you're a New Orleans Saints fan? Let's do some gold and some black. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, I, I can really dig it. Right now, black and gold. Brand new really bathroom in my house. Really so. digging deep. Really digging deep <laughs> to make the deal. Finish off. Yeah. And now you got two kits that you've just ravaged parts from sitting around, right? <laughs> yep. Very true. Well, you know, the great thing about hardware is that it's not perishable, right? So right. you can, can float around in the bay for like six months and it'll still be good. You know, it's, it's yeah, it won't, it won't rot. <laughs> yeah, at least it's not food. I mean, I think of all those containers full of like perishable oh, stuff. You know? There's uh, a diesel on the <laughs> to run all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, we've got a, we, I've got a chocolate manufacturer in Fort Myers. <clears throat> he does a lot of shipping internationally. And they packed it in dry ice. And when they had a, and the planes got grounded back around Christmas time, which was his big rush, these chocolates were sitting on an airplane in the Fort Myers runway, melting away, <laughs> just melting away. And so it's coming out of a hot climate. They've got it packed in dry ice. They only last a couple of days. Yeah. And uh, he lost a lot of inventory. So, Chris, you're right. Yeah, our inventory has a shelf life, a <laughs> pretty good shelf life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So that's a good thing. So, yeah, it's changed my whole mind about um, stocking hardware. You know, I, I really never had in the past, you know, and then uh, now I'm starting to see, yeah, it's, it's a good time to start stocking up. So I've got you more don't hardware than I've ever had. You buy from U.S. Horizons, if you buy 5,000, I, I don't know if that's a big number for you or a small number for you of inventory, it's free shipping and 10% discount. That's a, that's a considerable amount. Now, you got to have space to store it and know that you're going to sell it. But you might want to resell it. Make an order and make that a side business and resell it to the smaller guys that can't get the product. But that's, that's an option for all of us. Yeah, I had a discussion with our shop manager today on how to expand our hardware space and secure it. That's a big part of my deal because I have, I kind of have a split building with, you know, commercial and residential split between the two and no real designated hardware space because we've always bought as package. You know, we get hardware and glass together. Yeah. I had to change that mindset, but I've also got to make the space for it. I've got to secure it. And I've got to have somebody manage it uh, separate from the glass, you know, so that's, for a smaller shop, you know, that's, that's a heavy consideration uh, is where am I going to put it? How am I going to keep it safe? And who's going to manage it? Um, instead of who's just going to put it with that individual shower, who's going to pick and pull and you can trust that they're not going to pick and pull gaskets and screws 
and washers and things from individual boxes. That's a, you know, for a, for a single shop guy, you know, where I'm, I'm kind of in between, I'm not a single guy, but I don't have a, a, a great procedure for something like that. Cause we've never done it before, but it's something you have to sit down and think about in this environment is how can I change the mindset on that in my building? Because I can't, I don't want to be the guy in town that says, no, sorry, we're like everybody else. We can't get it. I don't want to be that guy. You know, so that's, that's part of the equation for guys that are running smaller shops is there's, there's investment in the, in the product, but there's also investment in how do I make sure that it's safe in my building, uh, both from my own people and others. <laughs> well, Billy, we ran to that same thing. And what I did is I rented an off spot self-storage warehouse and I was the only one with a key. And that's where I kept the excess. So I would only bring back the smaller quantity. So if I got a pallet of uh, 200 boxes, I would have the warehouse guy give me a requisition for 10 hinges. I'd pick the 10 out of there. So you could do that yourself. If there was a self-storage place near you that was secured, had a gate, maybe a, a live guard at night that people use for storage of furniture or whatever, that's an ideal situation because you can receive there um, and you only need to buy a pallet jack so you can move stuff around in your warehouse. Yeah, I'm sitting there staring at my new garage and my house going, man, yeah. <laughs> some open square footage there that might come in handy. Yeah. <laughs> I had one of my major competitors, which Chris knows, and a good friend of mine worked for him. He used to work for me. And he'd go in there and they'd say, here's your tag, the glass is on rack A, your hardware is on shelf B. And he would go over there and somebody would have stole, you know, taken his, somebody else would have taken his hardware to do their job because they couldn't find their hardware. You know, that was, that was his problem. Yeah. We Terrible. Went through, Terrible. We went through all of that. Brand, Brandon and I were talking about that about a month ago, how you, we try and stage it for the installers. Let somebody in the shop yeah. pull, pull the channeling, pull the sweep, pull the gasket, the caulking, everything. And it's not that the guys are going to steal it. It's just that they don't leave a note. Hey, I took the last roll of paper towels or, you yeah. know. You know, so we have a backup to the backup. It's crazy, but if you leave it open for the installers to help themselves, basically you're letting the inmates run the asylum. Well, yeah, and they do. They, they just, just, they couldn't they find could, their box. So they go over here yeah. and take that box. Yep. And Dave would go look for his hardware. It's not there. It's a yeah. common problem, Tim. It's the whole industry until yeah. you get to the point or a mindset hey, I'm going to invest the money to have the guy and I'm also going to have the guy do the coating on the glass. I'm going to have him prepare the metals for jobs going out. Yeah. You know, There's yeah. a number of things that you can have that guy do. Wash the trucks when they come back. They'll look good. Vacuum them out. Do an inventory of the screws and whatever razor blades they need. I like this company had four shops, you know, and it would never run right. <laughs> yeah. I'll say we do a combination of the two. So I have, I have an, like what I call my shower manager, who's my guy that's checking in glass, matching hardware with it, uh, yeah. preparing the shower. And, you know, we put it in a slip rack and everything's together for the guys that come and load on their truck. Uh, but we actually kind of, we took an old office space. It was a really small space, kind of too small for an office. And we created kind of a, uh, like a shop store. So we have all the small item products that our guys need, you know, your silicone, your, your setting blocks, uh, mirror covers, um, just various small items. And they go in there and they have a sign out sheet that they have to write in, you know, name, what the date is, what they took. Uh, so my shop foreman, he can, you know, keep up with the stock in there. So it's like a, you know, kind of like a little store inside of our building um, that we did to try to manage direct access of our, our install crews to the product. Cause that was getting, you know, we would get down, nobody would know we'd be, you know, run out of silicone. Well, that's a, that's a pretty big deal. Uh, when you're running showers constantly. So, so yeah, we, we did it that way. So I have a combination of, you know, my shower manager and our shop store uh, that keep up with the stuff for the guys. So we, we used to do it that way. And then we changed the requisitions. So the guys fill out sheets of what they need. So they're not putting their hands on it. And we let the shower guy pick and fulfill the requisitions. 
Yeah, I would say with your volume, that's definitely, you know, I'm sure when you started doing more and more and more, it had to move to something like that. So it had to, yeah. We're not quite there, but it's, you know, but down, you know, that's where you get to when, when, when people are pulling that much product. Yeah. Uh, so I got a question. So Bill, when your guys go out in their truck, do they have a checkoff list to make sure they have everything they need to yes. do the job? Yes. I, I think every every guy should have that, right? I mean, well, I, I don't care yourself or Chris or one man. Well, I, I, I've had one and my guys, you know, I sort of slacked off and all of a sudden everything's got screwed up. So mm -hmm. I, I, typed up, uh, I typed up a new one to do. <laughs> yeah. You know, and they're going to you know, check everything off before they leave my shop. Sure. You know, I mean, I, I, I slacked off on it. I shouldn't have. Yeah. So now so, it's. But now you're back on the horse. Now I'm back. That's right. Yeah. Buddy. Look out. He's so back. Chris, out. You know, I'm Chris, what was it a month ago? <laughs> About a month ago, everybody was sending in pictures of their trucks and then the inside. Huh? And you can take a look at a lot of the guys that had this stuff organized. So even if it was your backup screws, setting blocks, caulking, tape, whatever yeah. you need, it was organized in the truck. Most everybody had a stocked truck. And then it's just a matter of reloading what was there. Yes. And, the, and the key is labeling it. So when you, you see an empty shelf, you know what's supposed to be on that shelf. So you got to have that shelf labeled. That's no, a big deal. My, my truck is set up. There's boxes there. They check them. But so on my checkout list, conferred job name matches tags on glass. You yeah. know, uh, check all hardware matches the finish. Wash and check the glass for, for sizes. Check for damage. If shower guard, check for the right surface, because I have a checker for that. Mm -hmm. uh, hinges clean with alcohol and put them on. Uh, Stall hinges and clamps, tape edges that are needed. And I, I tell them how to put the hinges on to make sure they're the right set. Then on truck, cut drip, screws, loose hinge gaskets that you can't put on. Handles, towel bar, silicone, work order. Make sure the shower bar, shower door box on truck is stocked. Empty vacuum and clean. Ah. And chop saw if needed. <laughs> if needed. If needed. That's good, man. That's good stuff. And my guy gets out there and goes, uh, I'm going to bring a chop saw. Tim, you got to add the last line. Bring back the check. Yeah, bring back the check. Three things. Oh, yeah, that's right. I got to add that. <laughs> very, very because good. I'll send my guy out <laughs> with it invoice and it'll have a credit card receipt on it yeah and he'll bring it back to me what did you do that for well you didn't tell me to leave it uh, uh, it's those guys. guys you got to keep an eye on them all the time it's all procedures i'm gonna add, i'm gonna add that what you said yeah. <laughs> bring back the check yeah get the check get three get three rules get the check get the check get the check get, oh yeah so Right on, guys. Hey, that was, that was a good topic tonight. I learned some stuff. I got some ideas. I think Love that's it. the whole idea, right? It's just but you don't have anybody to tell what to do. No, just me. <laughs> and my wife, I tell her. Well, your wife can make the check. You better out. just keep doing what you're doing because you're doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Hey, always fun hanging evening. out with you. Thanks for showing up. Really appreciate it, man. You guys are awesome. We'll see you next Wednesday. Thanks, yeah. Chris. Good night. Thanks, everybody. Good night, guys.